a daily dose of practical wit and wisdom with a professional educator and trainer, Amazon best-selling author, United States Marine, television and radio host, Paul G. Markle. Each episode will focus on positive and productive ways to strengthen your mindset and help you improve your relationships, career goals, and overall well-being. Please welcome your host, Paul G. Markle. All right, it's that time again. Pour yourself a cup of coffee, or if you're driving, don't pour yourself a cup of coffee. Put both hands on the wheel and pay attention to the road in front of you. Or maybe you're on a treadmill. Either way, it's time for Morning Mindset. Way back when, well, a few years ago, maybe 10 years ago or so, I went to work as a military contractor, as a small arms and tactics instructor for the United States military during the global war on terror. And as you probably saw in my bio, many, many moons ago in 1987, I became a United States Marine. So I had a little bit of, little bit of experience with that whole military thing. Now, as a, an instructor, one of my favorite classes to teach to my military students was land navigation. Now, many of you, if you were Boy Scouts or Girl Scouts, you may have heard of land navigation or you might have heard of it called orienteering. Uh, it's basically using a map and a compass and a protractor and a pencil and uh, finding your way in the woods, in the field, wherever you happen to be. Now, a lot of you guys out there, you're like, ah, oh, but in Paul in 20, you know, I've got Google Maps and I, I've got a GPS and I've got my smartphone and, and I, I don't need an actual paper map and a compass and so forth. I just I just put in where I want to go and it takes me there. Okay. Well, what you do in the military, though, is something a little bit different. Yes, the military does have GPS units, but it's also very, very important for them to teach their students basic, fundamental land navigation. Because all of these new, cool, shiny things that we have with technology are always subject to error. The batteries could die. The satellites could be off. Have you ever trusted Google Maps or any of the other online map services to tell you where you needed to go and only to find out that you weren't where you were supposed to go and it didn't take you where you needed to be? They're not infallible. And depending uh, where you are on planet Earth, they, uh, the maps may not quite be up to date. So what we would do is we would you know, have an initial classroom session with the kids. And when I say kids, I mean 18, 19, 20-year-old young military students. And we would go over how to use a map, how to read a map, how to use a compass and a protractor and so on and so forth. We do that in the classroom. Then we'd get out actually into the woods, out into the field, and we would give them maps. They would have maps and compasses and protractors. And we would divide them into small teams and they would have to find their way. Now, the first thing that they had to know in order to navigate using a map, you have to know where you are. <laughs> yeah, you, you can't just open a map and say, all right, let's go. You have to be able to look at the map and say, all right, this is exactly where I am on this map. You've got to have a starting point. That's the first thing you have to have. If you don't have a starting point, if you don't know where you are on the map, it doesn't matter how good at reading a compass you are. So the first thing they had to figure out is, where am I on this map? Where is my starting point? And the next thing they would have to do is they would have to plot out a course. They would have to get a reading on the compass or on the protractor. They would have to align their maps so that they were lined up facing north. Then they needed to figure out approximately how far they needed to go. Now, if it was a great distance, if it was a long distance, rather than try and go all at once, what they would do is they would divide the, the journey up into what they called legs, shorter legs. And periodically, especially if it was a long leg, they would have to sit down and assess their situation and say, okay, are we still going in the right direction? Are we on track? <laughs> and when it comes to goal setting, goal setting is very, very similar to working, uh, well, with a map and a compass and doing land navigation. Think about it. You're going to set goals for yourself, whether they're relationship goals, 
career goals, personal goals, whatever educational goals, whatever these goals happen to be. Now, it's good to set goals, but the first thing you need to do is going all the way back to the beginning of Morning Mindset. You need to do that honest self-assessment. You've got to do that gut check. You have to determine, you say, where am I right now? Where am I right now on my journey? What kind of education do I have? What kind of experience do I have? Am I head, Am I going to head in the right direction? I don't know. Step number one, where are you right now? And it doesn't really matter where you are. Everyone's got to start somewhere. But you have to start with some honest self-assessment. Okay, somebody that just graduated from high school yesterday, if their goal could be, I want to be the CEO of Google. Okay, that's a, that's a nice goal, but you're not going to walk through the front doors of Google tomorrow with a resume and say, here you go, I want to be your CEO, I want to be the president. That's impractical, right? So, how, but, all right, let's say that that was your goal. How do you get there? Just like with navigation, when you set your course, it may be a long journey. And it would be easy to think, man, this is going to take so long. It'll be, But if you break it up into shorter legs shorter segments, it doesn't seem so long. And then as you go through those shorter legs and shorter segments, you can sit down and you can do some honest self-assessment and say, all right, am I still on track? Are all the compass readings good? Let's look at the map and let's see if we are on the map where we're supposed to be. Look around and figure it out. So when it comes to setting goals, number one, where are you? Where are you in your life at this moment in time? What can you achieve in the short term? Now, generally, uh, when I've been taught when many, many years ago, when I was taught about goals from my life coaches and so forth, they said short term, medium and long term, such as what am I going to do in this next year? And this is easy to do in the beginning of the year. And it's what most people do. Most people in January, around the first of the year, they do some self-assessment and, you know, they, they take stock of their lives and they say, all right, this year I'm going to blank, fill in the cliche, quit smoking, lose weight, exercise more, save money, whatever it is, right? But the problem is, is they just say that, but they don't have any, they don't have a map. They don't have a compass. They don't have a protractor. They have no way of actually getting there. They just say these things. What I want you to do is I want you to write it down. What is your goal for this year. That is a short-term goal. This year, I'm going to accomplish blank. Now, it may, it may only be one thing. Let's say this year, you want to get a promotion at work, or you want to quit smoking, or you want to get stronger, you want to lose weight, whatever it happens to be. Okay, great. Write that down. That's a one-year goal. Now, if you're a younger person, especially if you're of the college age, you're going to want to write down not only a one-year goal, but you're going to want to write down five-year goals. Forecast out five years. Within five years, what do I want to have accomplished? Maybe it's I want to have a degree. Okay. Maybe it's I want to I want to get married. Maybe my goal is to purchase a house. Whatever it happens to be. So one year, five year, and then we start projecting for long-term goals. Like I said, you just got out of high school or maybe you just graduated from college. You don't walk through the front door of Google or IBM or whatever with your brand new resume and your degree and say, I'm applying for the job of CEO or president, what have you. That's not how it happens. So if you want to do that, let's say I do want to be the CEO of a company someday. I want to be the president of a company someday. That's a 10-year goal. So for one-year goals, write it down. And when I say write it down, I'm not kidding. I really mean find a pen, find a pencil, find a notepad, and write it down. You say, Paul, I've got an app on my phone. I'll just, I just take notes on my laptop or I take notes on my phone. Five years from now, you think you're still going to have that exact same phone with the same amount of apps in it? How many pictures have you taken on your phone that you looked at once and haven't seen for years? How many of you still have phones in desk drawer somewhere that you won't throw out or trade in because they're full of old pictures that someday you think you're going to look at again? (laughs) Like I said, in my personal experience, when I was a, a young Marine, 
I was stationed on board a ship called the USS Forrestal. And a friend of mine, he said, you know, he, he was talking to me about goals. And he said, Paul, he said, you need to write your goals down. He, goes, he, was, he was a real goal-oriented guy. And he said, you know, write them down. And so I was like, okay, I will. So I sat down and I wrote them all down. And I, I wrote down, a, a, you know, one-year goal, short-term, five and ten. And many years later, after I'd already been married, after I had children, I, I went through some of my stuff from when I was in the Marine Corps. And I opened up that book and I found that, you know what, it, with, with one exception, I had fulfilled all of those goals. So I want you to do that. Get a piece of paper, get a notebook. I want you to write down your one-year goal, your five-year goals, and your 10-year goals. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you very, very much for joining me today, and I'll talk to you again real soon. Thank you for spending time with us today. To get show notes, submit a topic request, and for more from your host, Paul G. Markle, visit morningmindsetpodcast.com. That's Morning Mindset podcast.com. Please leave a review for this podcast on your favorite podcast player. We appreciate your time and effort, and we look forward to reading your honest feedback.